this video, we are going to be determining hydraulic coefficients, coefficient of discharge, of contraction, and outflow loss for small circular orifice at the bottom of the tank, in which we are going to be using the hydraulic bench. The introduction to different parts of the apparatus that we are going to use. First of all, there's the supply from the hydraulic bench, from where water comes over from the sump tank. The next is the turbulency dim diminisher. As water from the sump tank comes at a really high pressure, the turbulency diminisher finishes all the relay turbulency and therefore makes a really laminar flow. The next is the orifice, which is, which is at the bottom of the tank. In order to see how water leaves, we can see that water is leaving in the bottom of the tank where the orifice is situated. The pipe for static head measurement comes straight from the bottom and as you can see over here, it is connected to a scale which measures the head, so apparently that is there. The next is the mi micrometer connected to the pi taut tube. The pi taut tube and the micrometer are connected so that they can measure the velocity and the total head, or so to say the entire energy associated with the water that is coming out of the when at the when it contract. There are two scales, one for the Python tube and one for this one for the static head. And the following readings are necessary to be taken. The static head from the scale, like we like we observed in the previous previous slide, the Python head, the number of turns the micrometer will move while will turn while moving from one end of the flow to the other, from which we'll be finding the diameter of the vena contracta. The diameter of the orifice which comes from the manufacturer of the apparatus and the measurement of discharge under steady conditions. Demonstration working using the tank. As soon as you open the supply from the hydraulic bench, the water comes rushing in, but the turbulency diminisher finishes all the relay turbulency associated with the water. And the static head, me static head measures the, the flow, the static head associated with the water in the tank. Upon reaching a certain point, the level in the static head goes beyond that of being able to measure, so therefore the overflow comes into consideration. The overflow acts when the level in the static head increases beyond its capacity, so therefore the overflow takes all the unnecessary water and takes out of the tank. Demonstration working. Measuring the diameter of the diameter of the when I contract it. In order to measure the diameter of the vena contracta, you simply move this python tube from one end of the flow to the other end. The number of turns the micrometer the number of turn the micrometer turns, you multiply that with the least count of the micrometer, which gives you the diameter of the vena contracta. Demonstration working. Measuring the python head. In order to measure the pi tot head, you simply take the pi tot tube using the micrometer and maneuvering it to the center of the flow. As soon as you take it to the center, the pi tot head would move, as you can see over here, which gives you the correct recording font steady. Measuring discharge. As soon as the wall you measuring tank gets water and the dump valve is closed, the amount of water can be seen from the side and tube scale in the, in the hydraulic bench. Which can be see, clearly seen. In order to measure the discharge, you can simply turn on a stopwatch. You can simply turn on a stopwatch and measure volume from a certain amount to the other. Dividing the volume on the time you measure gives you the discharge and any particular flow from which we can measure the discharge that is going through the tank. Finding the coefficients. From the measurement that's taken we need to find the area of the inbuilt orifice which can be which can be had from the manufacturer's manual. The area of the vena contractor as we have seen through the number of turns associated with the micrometer screw gauge and the actual discharge as we've seen. Calculation of just derived parameters. Once we found all the required parameters, we can simply find their derived ones using mathematical equations. For theoretical discharge, we have the, the, the 
and we can multiply the area of the orifice into the square root of 2 times the gravitational acceleration into the static head. As for the coefficient of contraction, we can simply divide the area of any contractor as we previously measured for the area of the original orifice. For the coefficient of velocity, we simply divide to a square root of 2 times the gravitational acceleration into the Python head, all divided by a square root of 2 times the gravitational acceleration into the static head. Finally, for the coefficient of discharge, we multiply the coefficient of contraction and coefficient of velocity. This gives us all the required parameters as we define it the first and the first most slide. Thank you very much for watching this video. The instructor of the entire experiment was Engineer Muhammad Saman, and our group members were narration by Omer Shafiq, video by Osama, Mudassir, Halim, Hamza, Arsalan Shweb, Mustajab. The presentation was made by Hassan Amjad, Muzammir Hussain, Abdul Jabbar, Nabil Wali, Ramani Yaqat, and Muhammad Zayd Khan. And the video compilation was done by Asimullah Shah. Thank you very much.